Hello, my name is Matthew Randall, and I'm going to do a tutorial on preparing a plate for um, use in a tracking tool. So the thing to keep in mind is that this plate isn't going to be used in the final comp. Everything we're doing with this plate is purely to optimize it for the purposes of tracking. So one of the things we want to do is, it's basically three things we want to do, is we want to undistort the plate, uh, is the first thing that we want to do. And that's removing any lens distortion so that the tracking is more accurate. The third thing you want to do is potentially optimize the color to help the tracking tool. So that might be adding contrast. That might be, if it's noisy, adding a bit of blur. The third thing we want to do is output it in a format that's going to work with our tracking tool. So in this case, I'm using a uh, match mover. Uh, and I am potentially want to bring this plate is as a reference into Maya as well. Uh, and so the, the best format really to support both of those is a JPEG sequence. So again, a JPEG sequence isn't something you would particularly use in a compositing workflow, but this, isn't, this is going to be used for your tracking, not for your compositing. So we can optimize what we're doing here to suit the needs of the tracking software. Okay, so first thing we want to do is understore the uh, grid. So what we're going to do is we're going to use a lens distortion node. Um, now what, what I should point out is that this uh, footage here, this image sequence here, which is just a, a camera moving forward, okay, it's just a forward move with a camera as a handheld shot. Uh, this sequence was shot using the same camera and lens combination as this distortion grid. Okay, and this distortion grid is just a single file. Uh, it was an image sequence, but all I've done is just pick um, uh, one image out of that. Uh, 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 sorry, one image out of that image sequence. Okay. Similarly, if you had a, a video sequence, you can just extract a still from that and use that as the basis of your um, uh, of your uh, for undistorting your lens. Okay. So this distortion grid is simply, if I just look at it in the viewer, hang on, just connect that up. Okay, you're going to press two. Uh, this distortion grid here is simply um, just a, an A3 uh, an A3 printout grid that I've mounted on a piece of card and shot with the same camera and lens combination. Uh, you don't need to shoot this in the same location with the same lighting. That's not what we that it's, that it's being used for. It's just there to look at the sort of lens distortion. Okay, so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to use this as a basis of figuring out our lens distortion. So what we're going to do is we're going to um, connect it to a lens distortion node. So here's our lens distortion node that we've created. And I'm just going to close down these properties on the right hand side here just to avoid any confusion. So this is the properties of our lens distortion node. And there's various ways of doing analysis on here and you can research these if you want, but I don't want to go into detail about lens distortion here. What we're going to do is we're going to use a grid analysis. So I'm going to click on that. And all we need to do is just click analyze grid. Now, what I want you to notice before I do that is notice that there's no distortion values here. So there's nothing, you know, if I go, if I go undistort, it does nothing to our image because we haven't created any distortion values here. If I go to grid analysis and I just click analyze grid, okay, and sorry, just so you notice, this is plugged into here now. So just the way that I actually created this. Uh, if I select this and press tab, that automatically uh, uh, connects it to that node. Okay, so just so you, in case you hadn't seen that. Okay, so I'm going to click the Analyze Grid. And now when I go, and you'll notice that it's flattened out our image here. Okay. And if you didn't spot that, I will uh, go back over that in a moment. Uh, I'll demonstrate that in a moment. But if we go back to our lens distortion tab here, what you'll see is it, we've now got distortion value. So it's generated, it's analyzed that grid and understood the lens gen distortion and generated some lens distortion values for us. Okay. Now, just to demonstrate that in action, what you'll see as well is it's already turned on the undistort node for us. So now we're already seeing you know, the output of this lens distortion is, I know the, the name's quite a little bit confusing because this is kind of undistorting rather than adding distortion, but actually you can use this either way. Um, so what we want to do is, um, um, so what this is now doing is outputting the undistorted version. If I just click this button here, you'll see we go back to the original with this slight curve here. You can see the slight curve, especially on this bottom grid here. And then when I click this, you can see that it's undistorted. 
great. So we figured out our, uh, our distortion values, but obviously we don't want to apply this to the grid. What we want to do is apply this to this source here. So that's a very simple process. We just disconnect that and connect it to this source here. So now we are now undistorting this source here. Okay, and we can keep this here as a reference. And um, indeed, you might want to later on in your composite, it might make things once you've composited all your 3D, tracked it, and composited all your 3D elements. What you might want to do is apply a lens dis that that same lens distortion uh, back to the image uh, to make it look a little bit more natural um, uh, for your final composite. That's a, a, a technique that's often used. Okay, so now we've done our distortion, let's have a look at things we could do in terms of color correction. So one of the things we can do is we could just uh, reach for our exposure tool. Okay, I'm just going to plug this in. Here we go. It's just, I've got rather a lot of nose on this viewer at the moment. I'm just going to get rid of these. There we go. Right. Just lay this out a little bit better. Okay, um, and the exposure tool, which is here, we can uh, adjust the exposure and optimize that. This doesn't need a lot of adjustment. And then what I might want to do is I could add a bit of contrast. So I could add a, a grade node. Uh, just press G to add a grade node there. Uh, and uh, I guess what I really what I want to look at is things like the gamma. So I could pull down the gamma. Uh, and then lift up the gain a little bit and I can give a bit more contrast in there. Again, not particularly necessary on this plate, but it just pulls things out. Um, other things I could do is if the plate was quite noisy, so it's worth sort of analyzing the plate a little bit. Uh, obviously, there's a bit of motion blur here, so let's look at a more sort of still plate. Uh, and if I go, you know, go in at 100% and sort of have a closer look at the plate, look at any noise, look at the color levels, uh, etc. And what we're trying to do is just optimize this so we've got some nice high contrast features that are going to help the um, uh, the camera tracking tool uh, that we're going to use. Okay. Um, let's just zoom this back out. Here we go. Uh, and again, um, if there was a lot of noise in here, I might consider putting this through a blur tool. I could do that. Uh, it may be that I have noise on particular channels. So for example, uh, the blue channel tends to be quite noisy. So again, I could use, I could actually um, uh, use Nuke just to extract, say, the green channel, which might be, um, uh, which might have less noise on it, um, uh, and uh, simply extract a black and white image, uh, uh, take that green channel and extract a black and white uh, uh, image from that and track based on that if I want to, if I felt I needed to. I'm happy with this for the purposes of tracking. So that's, so we've undistorted, we've given our, we've, we've treated our image just to optimize it for tracking. Again, this is not a final look that we're going for, this is purely for tracking. And once we've used this uh, video that we're creating for tracking, we're more than likely just going to discard it. It's unlikely to uh, be any part, further part of the um, uh, visual effects pipeline. Finally, what we want to do is we want to output this. So I'm going to use a right node. Here's my right node, okay? And I want to write it as a JPEG sequence. Again, you'll want to write it out uh, as a, a format that, that, that suits um, whatever tool you're using, okay? Uh, now, we're going to output it to Maya and uh, Match Mover. Now, one of the th for, for use in Maya and Match Mover. Now, one of the things about peculiarities of Maya is that the file format needs to be the name of your image sequence dot so then, then a dot, then the number, image number, then a dot, then the extension. So most of the time, you don't need that extra dot between the name and the number. So the name of your image sequence and the number. But in this case, we do want that extra dot. So let me just demonstrate that. When we go to do our file, what we're going to do is I'm going to click on this icon here. And I'm automatically going to, I've automatically gone to my output file. So I've just got this output file that I've created. And I'm just going to call it um, track sequence. Or I might just call it undistort. Undistort sequence. Okay, and then what I'm going to do is go dot. And then where the numbers are going to be, I'm going to go hash, 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 dot. And then I'm going to go out as a, as a JPEG. So I'm just going to go JPG. OK, so it's really important quite often um, by default when it's creating an image sequence, it will create something like this. 
okay or you might see other video tutorials and it'll create something like this uh, which is fine for most packages so it's got no dot between the name of the image sequence and the actual uh, name number of the frame uh, but for Maya you need that dot so that's the, the critical part okay let's go save uh, now this tool is automatically picked up from the JPEG sequence that I want to use a JPEG type it may be that you have to change this here um, but we're, we're okay uh, you can adjust the quality um, don't go overboard with this uh, I think sort of anything above 80 is kind of um, not really needed and then when you're ready just click render uh, and then just click OK. Obviously just check that your input output range is correct. In this case it's fine and we just click OK. And I'm just going to pause this while it renders. OK and we can see if I just bring this onto your screen uh, we can see that we've got the uh, undistorted sequence here and this should work in uh, Match Mover and um, uh, sorry and uh, uh, Maya just fine. Okay.